So we're on day three now of our cricket strength series. So we've done day one, which was a lower body day, day two, which was an upper body day. And now day three, we're going to, day, day three, we're going to do our second upper body day. Um, if you've seen the first upper body day, sort of talk about the differences between the two. Um, we did some horizontal pushing and some horizontal pulling, which is the way I like to split it up. Um, and then today we're going to do vertical pushing with a military, military press and vertical pulling. Um, so we like pull-ups. Um, so they'll be our two compound movements of the day. Then we'll go on and do some other exercises after that. Um, some uni uni unilateral exercises. Oh my God, I can't speak. Um, and then we'll do some core work, some rotational core work, and then some bits to finish just for a bit of shoulder health. What you may consider people call like prehab. I don't really like that term of like prehabby stuff, but prehabby stuff. Um, and that'll be to finish off. So you might do some supersets to finish just as a bit of a time saver. No other reason. You can do them on your own if you want. Um, but that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I will see you in the gym. Right, as I said, to start off, we are going to go with a strict press or military press, whatever they call it, an overhead press. So I would usually do this standing, um, but as you might be able to see, the roof is like about three inches above my head, so I can't do that. So I'm going to do it seated, but still with a barbell. Um, I tend not to use, like, I leave the bench flat, um, I sort of prefer doing it that bit, bit like that, so you're not like leaning into the bench or anything. Um, but with this, feel free to do it with dumbbells. For be for the can't speak today. If you are doing this, feel free to do it with a barbell. Do it with dumbbells, seated, um, standing, whatever. Um, it doesn't really make a massive difference. But as you go through this series, as, as, if you want to progress and keep going, um, we go and we go on with this. Um, I'd stick to the same thing, only so you can you know your progressions. You know, standing against seated, you're probably going to be able to lift slightly different weights. Dumbbells, barbells can be slightly different. So pick one now on your starting week, and then I just go with that. Then if you go like a six-week cycle, stick with that, and then you can change it up then on your next cycle or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to warm up now. As I said, I don't really prescribe warm ups for people. Obviously, it's going to be all around my upper body because that's what we're doing today but my needs are going to be completely different to yours. So I work on a desk all day, so I've been sitting down all day, so I'll do some thoracic openers, a um, little bit of like rotator cuff stuff just to set my shoulders back and my shoulder blades. Um, so I'm going to get on with that now. I won't film that because it's pretty boring stuff. But you get the idea, um, pick some stuff which you feel tight, which you feel you need to warm up and go with that and then start your session then with a shoulder press. And I will get to that um, after I've warmed up. All right, so I warmed up um, and I started putting up the weight a bit. So I ran through some early strict presses just to get warmed up. So did a few with the empty bar, uh, a few with 40 kilos. I think my working weight will be about 50 kilos. Um, so we're going for five sets of five, like we did with the bench press and the squat. See, there's a bit of a trend. Um, so yeah, again, five sets of five, nice and controlled on the weight down. Um, from the top to your shoulders, so about two seconds. I want to come all the way down to your shoulders with this pause there for a second and then fast and explosive on the way up. So I'm going to see how this goes. Should be all right. Um, but yeah, set of this. Three to four minutes rest after this set and we'll see how it goes. Oh my god, the magnet.
Yeah. So, that wasn't too bad. Um, maybe being a bit light, so I might go up to 60 for 55 or 60 now for the last set. Four more sets. Um, I'll show you one more set after this. Yeah, I'll take three to four minutes rest and crack on. Um, so I will see you in the next exercise. We're going to do pull-ups and see how it goes. Right, so that was the strict press done. So that's our main movement really for the day in terms of strength. Um, now we're going on to our vertical pulling. So with this we're going to do pull-ups. As you can see, this is actually my setup for the pull-ups. So it's my barbell on the highest part of my rack, which isn't ideal. I don't really recommend it. Um, but I haven't got a pull-up bar in my garage and sort of making use of what I got. So this is what it is today. Um, and another issue with this sort of setup is that I am a lot taller, as you can see, than my rack. Um, so we sort of have to improvise and I'm gonna be doing some sort of L-sit pull-ups, pull which isn't great because probably my, my limiting factor on this is gonna be the L-sit. Um, I'm keeping my feet off the floor rather than the pulling factor, which you don't really want. It's not ideal. I usually do these in the gym across the road where they also have a assisted pull-up machine. So if you have one of them and you can't do pull-ups, do that. I would say for that sort of thing, if you're in the gym, it's just a bit easier. Um, you've got an actual um, pull-up bar. Aim for about three sets of eight to 12. Um, if that's too easy for you, use weight, a weighted vest, whatever. Um, if that's too hard for you, as I said, use a machine, or you can go then and do, you can do this. Um, so you've got to pull up bar between a rack. You can put a resistance band um, around the J hooks, so you can stand on it, and that'll help you then pull yourself up. So there's that option. Um, or you can do sort of uh, ring rows, something like that, an inverted row. So, Plenty of options, scalable. So this is going to be our exercise. I'll probably do five reps, maybe, um, with these three sets, five reps. Again, three minutes of rest, and let's get into it. <sighs> Yeah, so as I thought, I struggled to keep my legs off the floor. Bad cramp in my hip flexors. But yeah, that'll do me. It's not bad exercise in terms of what I've got. And also a bit of work for my L-sits. Um, but yeah, as you can probably see there, even though I am on a small rack and I am trying to keep myself off the floor, still trying to get that full extension at the bottom, you don't want to do that sort of thing where, you know, some people only come to you. You can't actually get a full extension in your lat with a bent arm, but you have to be really tuned in um, with how to do it. So what I'd suggest, all the way down, lock your elbows out all the way at the bottom, because the most important part of the movement is where your elbows are locked out and that pull, the first half of that pull probably, first three quarters of that pull. So. What I tend to do, if I, if, sometimes I go on the assisted pull-up machine because I find that really good if I'm doing higher reps. Sometimes I'll even do a few reps at the end where I don't get my chin over the bar. So you're engaging your lats so much, like probably the last like quarter 
maybe a bit less than that, but last bit of the rep is very bicep heavy. Um, so you can still get a really good work on sort of your lat and your pull-up mechanics, even if you don't get your chin over the bar. Even though people always say, oh, you gotta get your chin over the bar. I will start full range of motion and then maybe towards the end, to get a feeling where I'm going like three quarters of the way. Not out of choice, but like, because I'm close to failing and I can't get over my bar, biceps may be given out, but my back is still going. So it's a place where you can use it, something like that. So don't be afraid to put a few of those in at the end. Um, but yeah, two more sets of this, and then we are going to do some landmine presses. So that was done. Not ideal for me, really, from my point of view, in terms of I'm just doing like that, but we make do with what we got, I suppose. Um, next exercise, so we're going to go on to, so we've done vertical pushing exercise, vertical pulling exercise, so we're going to do another vertical pushing exercise, but a uni unilateral version. So it's going to be a landmine press. Um, I have got a video, one of my other videos on my channel, you have to have a look for it with how to do this setup with a landmine, um, for a landmine press with a barbell and no landmine attachment. So you can just put it in. What I do, just put a plate, bumper plate on the floor, and you can put one end into it so it stays there so it doesn't roll back and forth when you're pressing. In the half kneeling position then, if you haven't done a landmine press. Um, but you'll be able to see it now when I get started. So we're going three sets again. Now we're going towards like the 10 rep range again three seconds on the way down. Again, we've gone now from our strength work and we're going into sort of our muscle building work like we've done every other day. Um, so three seconds on the way down, these are gonna be longer sets and that's all part of that muscle building uh, goal. So the exercise, it chains up slightly, still fast explosive on the way up, three seconds down, pulls the chest, chest, shoulder. And yeah, that's about it. So yeah, that was a good set. Right now, we're getting to about failure. I probably had a couple of reps left in each set, which is again what we're aiming for, about two, two reps left every set. Um, so we're gonna go in now, do another two sets of 10 each side, probably, or around about near failure. And then we'll move on to our last exercise, which is I'm going to superset.
Right, Landmine Paris is done. And we're going to go on to now to finish a super set of Landmine Rotation. So keep the Landmine set up out. Um, it's going to be slightly different. I will go through it now when you can see sort of my whole body. Um, but there is like two ways of doing a Landmine Rotation. Um, so we'll do that first. And then we're going to go on to some rotator cuff stuff, um, just to build a bit of stability and integrity in your shoulder um, coming up to the season. Um, these are going to be good. I say coming up to the season, they could be good, good all year round, really. Um, sort of a, okay, this is the prehabby sort of section of the workout. Um, but yeah, it's just really good to develop all those muscles around the rotator cuff. Um, and just to make sure you've got a bit of strength in those little muscles, it's going to help when you're bowling. If you're bowling so much now, when you're starting your net um, and getting into the season, your shoulders are going to be going so much. So put in the work now, and then hopefully we'll have a clean run then through the season of not getting injured. But, you know, fingers crossed, it's never a guarantee. Um, yeah, as I said, with the landmine rotation, you sometimes see it um, where people's feet are fixed and you sort of take the bar, you don't twist your body, um, bring it back up to the center. And that then sort of counts as a anti-rotation exercise because you're fighting against the rotation um, as cricket does. Um, and as I said earlier with this sort of core workout, we want to work on the rotational aspect of our core. So what we are going to do, um, you'll be able to see it now, hopefully I'll get my feet in the shot. Um, but just slightly turn into the bar. So we'll start with the bar, sort of first level, arms locked out. I can't lock, lock my arms out because I hit the top of my <laughs> garage again. Um, just turn into, you bring the barbell like down to your hip. And as you see, my chest will follow the barbell and my outside foot. So my far side foot will twist rather than keeping it straight and keeping your body straight. So what that will allow us then is just to explode through the hips and through the core and rotate powerfully back to the center. Um, and this is what we really want to work on with cricketers. We're going to have so much carryover. Um, this is really as specific as I get in terms of cricket exercises, but there's so many core exercises out there um, to choose from. You could really waste, not waste a lot of time, but rotational core exercises are going to be better for a cricket player. That's all I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I'll crack on with it now, hopefully be able to see that rotation in there. So keep an eye on that. Um, and yeah, this will be our last exercise. Right, so yeah, that was the landmine press. Hopefully you could get a good idea. Um, I'll try to get a bit of a closer shot on my feet and my hips for the next set. Um, just so you have a good idea of what you're doing or what you need to be doing, just to get that rotational um, element to it. 
And then the other exercise, I never really remember. So it's a rotator cuff exercise um, by a guy um, called Charles Poliquin, a strength coach. Um, unfortunately, he's passed away now, um, but worked for years with um, Olympic athletes. Um, he swore by this in terms of helping people with their bench and thought it was like the sole reason um, why half of his stuff worked and how he can help people progress in, in his upper body exercises. So I tend to put these in. Um, we'll go yeah, 10 reps again with the landmine rotation, uh, five reps either side. Slow on the way down again with both exercises and explosive on the way up. And yeah, that'll do us for today. So I'm going to finish off again. Keep doing these as a superset. Um, so train going by, if you can hear that. Um, but yeah, that's going to take us up now for day three. Um, so this is going to be a second up body day. So what have we got left? We've got two more days left of training this week. We have got another lower body day, um, which is again a sort of posterior focus day. And then we're going to do a conditioning day. I normally slip that conditioning day into the middle of the week, um, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, but yeah, I will catch you in the next episode where we're going to do probably the posterior day.